This is Eyes on Africa News. I'm Hermela Aragawi. Here are your top stories. In Sudan, today marks one month since the conflict began. According to UN OSHA, at least 676 people have been killed and more than 5,000 injured. Last Thursday, the Sudanese army and the Rapid Support Forces signed an agreement in Saudi Arabia that said they would protect civilians and guarantee safe passage for humanitarian aid. But reports of attacks continue. Fighting has since escalated in the western state of Darfur. The Sudanese Doctors' Union says more than 200 people were killed there over the weekend. The conflict has displaced more than 900,000 people, mostly inside the country, but nearly 200,000 have fled to neighboring countries of Egypt, Chad, Sudan, Ethiopia, and the Central African Republic. In Somalia, heavy flooding in the central part of the country has killed at least 22 people, according to the UN. Somali officials say more than 200,000 people have been displaced. They fled their homes after heavy rainfall caused the Shebel Riverbank to burst. This follows months of a devastating drought in Somalia that reportedly killed tens of thousands. The rainy season is causing extreme weather in East and Central Africa. Earlier this month in Rwanda, floods and landslides caused by heavy rains killed 135 people and displaced 9,000. In the Democratic Republic of Congo next door, about 400 people were killed and thousands injured in major floods. Eritrean President Isaias Afwerki made a state visit to China. As you can see, Afwerki was received with an elaborate welcome ceremony. A spokesperson for China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs reported that during the talks, China commended Eritrea for pursuing a long-standing independent foreign policy. China's President Xi also said the country firmly supports Eritrea in safeguarding its sovereignty, security and development interests and opposes external interference in Eritrea's internal affairs and the imposition of unilateral sanctions. In Ethiopia, the country's National Election Board declined to reinstate the TPLF, the Tigray People's Liberation Front, as a political party, saying it's against electoral law. The election board says the TPLF needs to submit a re-registration request. The board removed the party's legal status in January 2021 after its leaders engaged in armed violence against the government. This March, parliaments removed the TPLF from the terror list. Representatives of the group signed a peace deal with the Ethiopian government last November following a two-year war. South Africa's president emphasized the government's non-alignment stance, saying it does not take sides in contests between global powers. In a weekly newsletter, President Cyril Ramaphosa said with the outbreak of the conflict between Russia and Ukraine, there has been extraordinary pressure on the country to abandon its non-aligned position and take sides in what he says is in effect a contest between Russia and the West. Last week, the U.S. ambassador to South Africa, Ruben Brigitte, accused the country of arming Russia. We are confident that weapons were loaded onto that vessel, and I would bet my life on the accuracy of that assertion. South Africa has rejected the accusations and says an investigation was already underway before Brigitte made those claims publicly. The government says the ambassador has since apologized. In a tweet, Brigitte said, quote, I was grateful for the opportunity to speak with Foreign Minister Pandor and correct any misimpressions I left by my public remarks. South Africa is a member of the Non-Aligned Movement, a form of 120 countries that are not formally aligned with or against any major power bloc. Thanks for listening. Please support independent journalism by becoming a member of our Patreon or going to eoanews.com to contribute. Details are in the description below. Thank you so much for your support.